Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and this is the third time I've tried to record this video. In this video, we're going to look at what causes or creates economic growth in an economy. And there's two main things we're going to look at. We're going to look at aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Aggregate in this instance just means total. And that will become clear as we go through these concepts. If we think about AD versus AS, we need to kind of define them to start by trying to understand what we mean. So let's focus on aggregate demand. Aggregate demand refers to total demand for goods and services in an economy. Total demand coming from consumers, firms, government, and the overseas sector. And the overseas sector here being exports minus imports. So aggregate demand is the total demand in the whole economy. One way to think about it is this way. It's like the sum of all of the demand curves in the economy. Aggregate demand really drives economic growth in the short to medium term. So it kind of gives it a boost over that time period, but not necessarily in the long term. So that's aggregate demand. If we then shift to aggregate supply, aggregate supply refers to the total productive capacity of the economy. It's kind of like how much the economy can produce. It's all about output. And aggregate supply is uh, it's the level of output when an economy is using all of the resources that are available to it. There's no excess or spare capacity. Aggregate supply is really important in driving economic growth in the long term. Okay, so if we're thinking about what causes growth short term, no problems. That's aggregate demand. In the long term, trying to increase how the economy, how much the economy can produce, well, that's aggregate supply. So in economics, we love graphs. What we're going to do here is we're going to draw the graph for aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So let's draw this graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up looking much like we do any other market equilibrium graphs with a few differences. So I've drawn up the axes. So rather than having the price for one good in this, because we're looking at the whole economy, we're going to have the prices for all goods. In fact, we're going to have the general level of prices, like the, the average level of prices in an economy. And in terms of the quantity side, we're going to have the whole quantity in the economy. So not just what's produced in one market, but what's produced in the whole economy. So we're going to label it this way. Total output or GDP. So one thing to remember is this fact. We're not just looking at a single market, but we're looking at all of the markets in the economy. So now let's draw up the curves. If we're thinking about aggregate demand, as we said before, we're trying to combine all of those individual demand curves into one giant whole economy curve. And that's going to look something like this. And then if we think about aggregate supply, we're again, we're combining, but this time we're combining those supply curves. We're not combining the demand curves. So it's going to look something like this. And then we can draw equilibrium and let's call it point A. So we've got the general level of prices that occurs in the economy. And then we've got the level of output that occurs in the economy at point A. And just to remember, So in this video, we've looked at the components of economic growth, aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Leave us a comment. Tell me what you think. Uh, check out some of the other videos. And as always, thanks for watching.